mainly males in our moth trap, and that's because they're zipping around all over the shop trying to find females. So in that sense, moths are very mobile. They migrate or they disperse quite a lot, and that's why it's really important um, when we're talking about landscape stuff, we're talking about having patches of habitat that are close enough to each other for things like moths to fly between them um, and nations in different spots. So I don't know if that helps, but I think that that's quite important because I think a lot of moths do great, but in an ad hoc way rather than, yeah, you're kind of north-south. Back in. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks very much, Simon and Will. That, that was amazing to see those moths. And um, we're going to have a, a tiny break from the real live moths with a, a little film about a cooperative art piece that also included moths that we, we are in the process of making. It just shows some people's hopes for the future as well. Jenny, you can, well, we'll play it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jenny, a director of Art and Energy. When our partners at Plymouth Energy Community told us that the theme for this year's International Day of Cooperatives was climate action, we just knew we wanted to be involved. I put together creative packs and sent them out to eight members of our collective. We then met up one evening via Zoom for a project update and a bit of a tutorial. Each participant painted their design onto a square of glass and then returned them to me I'm going to add solar cells and combine them to create a single, large, interactive solar artwork. In the next week or so, I'll be sending out creative packs to more of our collective. Hello, I'm Chloe and I'm one of the founders of the Art and Energy Collective. We came up with the idea of the Moths to Flame project because we wanted to create something for COP26 in Glasgow to tell world leaders that we really care about responding to the climate emergency. Hi, I'm Dave. Hi, I'm Jo. And we're from Laser Cuts Limited. Hi, my name's Ali, I'm part of Art and Energy. I'm Mary from Solar Power Education. I'm Ian. I'm part of Art and Energy. Hello, my name's Ray and I'm proud to work for Plymouth Energy Community. Hi, my name's Miranda Barlow. I've written and illustrated a children's book called The Moths Whisper for the Art and Energy Project Moths to a Flame. This is our piece that we're putting in for the Moth to a Flame collaborative artwork project. This is the moth that I've created this week for the installation. This is my scalloped oak moth that I've painted on the back of a piece of glass to add to our cooperative artwork. My hope is to combine new technologies with the simple joy of making. We want everybody to work together for a cleaner, greener future. My hope is that we can bring about change in how we make our energy so that animals, birds and insects can thrive alongside us. My hope is that we look at the power of a momentary encounter with nature and to question how we can use that power to care just a little bit more about our use of what we have. My hope for the future is that we can raise awareness and provide education and share our passion and commitment to making this world a healthier, greener a more positive place to live with a sustainable future. My hope for the future is that we can find ways to reconnect to our environment, to really appreciate its beauty and to understand the changes that we need to make in order to protect it. My hope for the future is that we can find ways to be creative in response to our energy challenge and that we can find a way to have a better relationship with ourselves, with our communities and with our planet. If there's one thing it's made us realise, it's quite how many amazing people we're working with. As with most of our projects, the final piece is already evolving, but that's the joy of having lots of lovely people cooperating together creatively. Let's cooperate and invite everyone to fight for climate change. Thank you. That was our interlude. And uh, yeah, we're hoping that everybody here is going to help us fight for a better future by leaving a whisper of hope or by filming themselves with the flying augmented reality moth and sending it into us to be part of the big 
installation, mass participation installation. So now we get on with more moths and we are moving over to Amy and Barry. Are you there? Yes, we are here. Hello again. Okay, I'm going to um, go to flip the camera around now and um, we, I think we'll just go straight to, oh no, we're going to do some caterpillars again quickly first. Caterpillar. Yeah. If you remember yeah. last night, the, the, I had some large ones and some much smaller ones. Oh, wow. The, Rivet hawk moth. Can I just hold it? Yeah. Let me just bring it up here. Now, that's about the size of, well, at least the size of my little finger. Yeah. And okay. um, you can see the markings on it are quite incredible. And this, again, this is our largest moth, isn't it, Barry? Yeah, yes, probably it's our largest resident moth, yeah. So, and, um, if we, and it usually rests this way up. I don't know, can you see that, uh, that what sits underside, which is uppermost at the moment, is a darker green than the light green underneath. Does that show up? Yeah, just, yeah. Just, okay. So the, so there's more, the idea is that there's more light um, comes down from the top than is reflected up from the bottom. So that it sort of even evens out so that it will appear, um, in that case, to a bird, a more sort of um, constant green. So it makes it look like a flat leaf rather than a cylinder. Oh, that's clever. But, yeah, that's called um, counter, called counter shading. It's why fish like mackerel are dark on the top and pale underneath. And you can look at that enormous spur on the back of it there. Yeah. What, what's what's that? Yeah. What's that for? I don't know. The, the hawk moths all have it. Um, I don't know what its function is. Is it scary? Would it put predators off? It might do. Might do. Yeah. There's um there's a question here from uh, Carolyn that says uh, that asks how long do moths remain mothy, live in a mothy form? Okay. And John touched on this a bit yesterday. But right. Um, well, how long do they stay as a moth? But it varies. Some of them don't feed as adults, and so they have a lifespan of a few days. Others feed, um, some of them pass the winter in the adult stage, so they may be a moth for 10 months. So wow. the answer is varies from species to species from a few days to 10 months. Great, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, right, we're going to unpack and have a look at this. And now, what's the name of this type of trap, Barry? This is a Robinson type trap. Whereas the one that I've got here is a Skinner. Skinner. Here we go. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right, what have we got underneath? Wave. That's a ribboned wave. And uh, let's take this off. And we've got uh, another Jersey tiger moth. That, that's interesting, isn't it? Because the markings are very, um, are sort of individual. They're, they're common in the main, but they're, they're not each exactly the same. No, that's probably right, yeah. In fact, some of them have yellow hind wings rather than red hind wings. Mm. So we've got a silver Y here. It's a common moth which uh, can migrate here in large numbers from the continent. And why do they all travel together if they come over in large numbers? What's the point of that? Is it a sort of... I think it's just local conditions. They, they build up their numbers, they get whisked up by the local weather conditions and uh, as much as a moth like that could probably fly over. I mean there's a lot of tiny tiny moths that couldn't possibly get here under their own steam really. They just get blown um, blown over really. Okay yeah that's so we've got here common rustic. So this is either common rustic or lesser common rustic. You have to um, kill them and dissect them to get them down to species level. But we're just we're not going to do that right now. Though. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> so just, just, to, just to show you the variation. So that's a common rustic, okay. And this one here is also a common rustic, despite the fact it looks rather different. So you can see what I mean when I say last night how when you, <laughs> when you start, everything looks sort of small and brown, unless it's a hawk moth. This is a large yellow end wing here. Now, I've no idea whether that large yellow wing emerged in my garden or whether it emerged in France. No way of telling. And these things can appear in large numbers. And it may be that the, when they appear in very large numbers, they have come from continent. 
it's we've no way to tell and this is a broad border yellow oh, one yeah. going okay and that's very pretty isn't it the markings on yeah the, the flame shoulder here flame shoulder see i'm i'm a, i'm big on these sort of quite romantic names <laughs> and the small angle shades yeah okay mm -hmm. what else we got Right, okay, so this one's a coronet here. Coronet. So that's an ash feeder, so quite what's going to happen to it when the ash all dies remains to be seen. Is that another silver another Y there? Another silver Y yeah. here, yeah. And here's another, look, this, this, oh. this is a micro moth here. Let me can pan we out a bit. On that one? Yeah, I think I've okay. just got it. So this is Eusophora pinguis, and that the larvae of that feed in the bark of ash trees. So again, what's going to happen to it? when the ash all dies I don't know. So down here we have a moth called the Dunbar, the big moth here. Yeah. So the Dunbar has you know the caterpillars eat foliage but also they quite like to eat other caterpillars as well. Oh. So they're really quite carnivorous. And there's a tiny tiny one next to it with a bit of yellow on yeah, it. Yeah there's a tiny little thing next to it which is Calyptilia robustella. Yeah, you need a cup of coffee. That, is that a little mic? That's a little micro moth. Yes, it is. Yeah, and that's a pumpkin seed. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a common footman there. Yeah, common footman. <laughs> footman moths, the caterpillars, by and large feed on algae and lichens, although not entirely. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, isn't one night? Oh, look at the camouflage on that with the egg box. Okay. What's that one there? So this one here, again, I can't tell you precisely what it is. It's either a grey dagger or a dark dagger. Again, you'd have to dissect it to work out which it is. But the easier thing to do is to find the caterpillars because the caterpillars look very different, but the moths are identical. Mm. That's, That's interesting. interesting. Yeah. So we've got a um, black arches here. That's the black and white yeah. patterned one. The black arches, we will just... Um, Wrinkle that out because the abdomen, if it'll show, is quite pink. And oh, yes. Lovely. Did you get another okay. flash of it then? The no, pink yeah. abdomen. Excuse me, looking under its skirts. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, we've, we've got a question in the chat about the yellow underwing and whether it was yeah. possible to see the, the yellow of the underwing. Oh, yes. Yeah. It'll probably okay. fly. I'll have to catch well, I'll, it. I'll have to hold it um, and show you. There we go. Thank you. We, we've also got a, a question from Gabby who says, when you open your moth trap, the moths don't fly away. When I open my moth trap, they fly immediately. And basically she's asking if she's missing a trick, if there's, there's something that, that you guys <laughs> do in particular. Or... Well, I think um, just keep them as cool as you can, really. Keep them in the shade. Do it early in the morning, right before the temperature of the day warms up. Otherwise, there's no special secret, really. Thank you. Barry says that, but he's got some sort of strange human moth vibration. So they just, <laughs> they know. <laughs> I have the opposite effect whenever I've done any moth trapping. <laughs> there's not been very many moths at all. That's that one there. So this is the lichness here. Lichness feeds in the seeds of red campion. So if you open the seed capsules of red campion, you often find the caterpillars of these things inside. They must be very small to fit in those little seed heads. Well, you'd be surprised. Really? Yeah, once they've eaten all the seeds. Oh. <laughs> um, look, there's another, there's another species of yellow underwing here. Okay. This is the lesser broad-bordered yellow underwing. We could probably show the... Uh, I mean, they look very sludgy on the right, top, and then yeah, they have these incredible markings underneath and is it just to again just to sort of frighten predators away or i think it probably is yeah isn't it? yeah oh we've got a pebble prominent here oh lovely and that looks quite nice from the side on as well that's an interesting shape too i mean it's got very it's got very large legs yeah one. spread out and, and hairy fluffy. yeah yes i mean the way i don't know why they're held out like that i mean it's um Possibly mimicking a spider. Yeah, I don't Some, know. Somebody's put on here. It, it it's like half a bee, so the front yeah. half is like a bee. I mean, some of them really do have. They're very very cuddly looking. You know, with what's going. Yeah. Right. Let's put. Um, can we? Can you? Yeah. 
can you see here we've got a common footman in the bottom and this one's got much broader wing this is the dingy footman yeah okay so yeah uh, oh buff. that's pretty what's oh, that yes, one that's the um the buff arches that buff arches there and then there's a buff, buff ermine. ermine um the empty caterpillar box i showed you the ones that burrowed last night were will look like that and what's this one here, Barry? This is that's, very... called, that's, a, that's a micro moth, despite its size. That's a micro moth. That's the mother of pearl. And you can actually see there's this lovely iridescence on it. I don't know how well it'll come up on the camera. Can you see as I turn it gently? Yeah. It's got it does have the, have that lovely pearl sheen on it. Yeah. yeah. We've got a swallow prominent here. Oh yeah. A bit like the pebble prominent, but a bit bigger, isn't it? Yeah. And the markings, the sort of raised bumps and lumps they have down there, yeah. back of their abdomen, is that to do with whatever it usually rests on in the day as a sort of camouflage? Or? I suppose so it breaks up the outline, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. We've got a, a scalloped oak. Oh, yes. Oh, good. So that, that was that, like... Um, Chloe's, Chloe's picture. Chloe's picture, yeah. 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 Mm. We've, we've got another yeah. question about the... Another yellow one going here. This one's the lesser yellow underwing. Okay. Yeah, we have. We've got a, a question here about, do you need a very bright light for a moth trap or will a dullish light uh, be good enough to attract moths? Yes, you, you can get away with it. Well, it depends what the wavelength is, you see. I mean, I've got a one bulb, which I don't use very often, which gives off the very faintest purple glow that's visible, but it's giving off ultraviolet light. And in fact, even although the bulb I use in this is bright, it's the ultraviolet light, which is invisible to, to us, which the moths can see, that really attracts them. Um, yeah. Which is so, yeah. All, about, all about the UV. Which is why we, we um, with our installation and all the paper cut moths with UV paint was reflecting on that. Yeah. That's an interesting shape. Can you see the oh, way this one's different to the others? A, yeah, a barred straw just rests in this peculiar way. Mm. Well, we've got an iron prominent here. Okay, so we've got iron prominent here. Oh, oh, look at the colours on that, yes. Again, it's got that lumpy bumpy back and furry yeah. feet. That's the, yeah. that's what I wrote, the prominent Technical I think. terms. <laughs> and uh, we've got a, this one Ooh. here. Look, this is a broad border jello underwing. Lovely. And if Lovely. I gosh, haven't, haven't you got a lot of different one. species to last night? We don't have any glamorous hawk moths though, which is all you know. Wow. Which I love. <laughs> Such a sucker for. Oh board, look. Broad bordered yeah. jello underwing. Then the broad bordered jello underwing, they they're thought to sort of do an ice debation. In other words, they have a sort of dormant phase during the summer. So they might emerge earlier in the summer, then just go into a dormant state for a few weeks and then become more active again in the autumn. Lovely. Oh, what's that? Oh, another, another interesting, I like the moth trap intruders, this little caddis fly, lovely uh, bright green wing. one. Oh, lace is it a lace wing? Lace oh yeah, it's yeah. a lace wing. Well, we've, um, We've nearly come to the end of uh, okay. seeing your lovely moth. Yeah. Yep. Time wise. Yeah. But there is a question about um, Miranda's asking about, <coughs> or is it Fran asking about holding them? When you hold them, Barry, you're, you're really gentle and, but, and they look like they're quite comfy. But <laughs> is, it, is it difficult? Do you, do you, is that come from lots of years of handling them? Yes. Yeah, it has probably. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't do them any harm at all, but of course they were quite chunky moths. I mean, yeah. smaller moths, it's much harder. You've got to, you've, you've got to be pretty gentle, really. I mean, yeah. there was very little pressure involved. Yeah. Yeah, just practice. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I don't know, we must have seen, I don't know, 20 or 30 different, different species, and Barry very kindly with Amy is going to draw up a list of all the different moths that we found last night and um we discovered 
maybe it was slightly <laughs> interesting, but a couple of days ago, we discovered that it's National Moth Week this week. I'm so sorry, Naomi, I've just muted you. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah. So, um, it's National Moth Week. And this started in America, but actually it's right across the world and there are more than 850 events going on in the week around the world in all sorts of countries. And so we've registered this event today and our recording and results will go into their list of results for the, the world on this night. And we're quite, we're quite pleased about that and, and we might even have some viewers that are also taking part in National Moth Week. Now we're moving on to John and John set up his trap a couple of days ago so he has a film for us. Hello John. Hi there, yeah, can you hear me? I just yeah. unmuted myself I think so. Okay yeah, so uh, yeah I said I, I haven't got internet connection where I am uh, well, where I set the moth trap anyway. Uh, so I set the trap up at uh, some friends who got the biggest state just up the road, and uh, I recorded the moths a couple of more a couple of mornings ago. It was much nicer weather then, actually. So this is the garden. Um, got a lovely lichen-covered gate. So, uh, they set the trap up on the lawn, and I got out very early in the morning. I think it's, it's best to get in as early as you can before birds get there. But also, as saying earlier, uh, when it's nice and cool, then the moths won't be flying around. So, uh, there were lots of midges about. Actually, I got totally attacked by midges, um, but it was a really good night for moths. I bought about 50 species of moths. First one up, a uh, poplar moth here. Uh, lovely buff arches. See that beautiful intricate markings on the wing. Lovely shading of grey and uh, arches. There. Stunning little moth. A uh, ruby tiger moth. A little furry moth. As its name, it's a ruby red colour. Uh, the caterpillars uh, feed during the winter. I often find them on my allotment. Um, this is a clouded border and a pebble prominent. Uh, the pebble prominent's got those furry twig hugger legs. Uh, and this is uh, another camouflage one, the Brussels lace moth. This one will be incredibly camouflaged, sat on a tree. The caterpillar feeds on lichen, and in a minute there's a very short clip of a, a picture of the caterpillar of this, uh, this moth, and it feeds on lichen and looks like lichen as well. Uh, this is the common footman, pumpkin seed moth, uh, lame his head. Uh, this one's a, a buff footman, so there's a number of these are quite difficult to identify, but this one's a really easy one, the rosy footman, absolutely stunning thing. This one's a very worn moth, but it is actually a small fan foot, and it's got a big nose on the top, but otherwise it might be tricky to identify. Uh, this one's the small magpie, it's not related to the magpie that Simon showed us earlier, uh, or Will showed us, this is um, a nettle feet and micro moth. Uh, another little micro moth with a strainer and a clay triple line, so that one's a little bit, uh, a little bit warm there. Two tricky ones to identify, Mary mentioned these, the uh, lesser common and common rustic, and this one's another one called rustic. There's another one very similar to that called the uncertain moth. Uh, and again, another tricky pair to identify are the common and the smoky wainscot. The smoky wainscot and another smoky wainscot there. Got a strange moth. Oh, here we go. This is a little micro moth that's wandered in off the moor. A little grass moth. And this one is the July high flyer. Uh, this this species is actually used for pulling wool pickets for lots of different forms. So it's generally green uh, and it has but had, comes in all sorts of patterns, but it has a distinctive shape, uh, which is really uh, and it flies in uh, Willow Beauty, uh, very camouflaged, or sitting on a bit of bark or whatever during the daytime. Lots of wasps in the trap, and sometimes it's when I run the trap at this site, there's so many wasps that I have to stop running the trap. And one night there were hundreds of hornets in there, so I had to just turn it off and run away. Uh, this is a coronet moth. You see, it looks like a black and white moth here, but I'll show you a little bit of a clip of it later on, uh, which shows how its camouflage works when it's out on a bit of bark. Okay. 
Now, this is a, another one which you have to uh, take a much closer look at to identify, a copper underwing. One of those two species which are almost identical. And you have to look at the underside of the hind wing to actually identify it. But even in a tube like this, you can't do it. So you have to use this technique, as, as Barry was doing, to carefully pull apart and look at the, the pattern on the underside of the hind wing there. And this is actually a, a Svensson's uh, copper underwing, I think. And there it flies away, but a little bit tricky to actually hold that. And this is a little cuddly, looks like a furry pig or a little cuddly little thing. This is a drinker moth, has a little, uh, a little nose there, beautiful little moth. It's actually named after the caterpillar, which uh, feeds on dry grasses and so it actually drinks dewdrops. So that's where the drinker moth gets its name. Uh, the moth is a very stout moth. This is a male, the female is much larger and a little bit paler. Um, this is a single dotted wave. Again, there's a number of little wave moths which are quite tricky to identify, uh, but this is uh, one of the easier ones. It has these lovely little uh, row of dots on the on the high, on the upper wing there. Uh, one we saw earlier, the flame shoulder, uh, as its name suggests, it has this lovely flash of flame across the uh, the forewing. And this is a, a male, large yellow underwing. You can tell the sexes of these. The uh, the males are these sort of greyer ones, and the the females are those sort of red brown ones. Sat on the side of the trap, this is a purple thorn moth just mimicking a leaf. It looks quite obvious there, but I've, again, I'll show you a little clip in a minute. As I said, I've caught about 50 species and a good number of moths in the trap. So it was a really good night, nice and mild uh, and cloudy. Uh, so I just made a note uh, of all the moths, put them back because the people who own the, the garden wanted to have a look at the moths. So I tucked them all away and put them in a shady spot. Uh, I had to clear up, there were lots of moths on the lawn, uh, so it took quite a while actually to find them, and some of them were quite away from the moth trap. So I tucked them away, but I did keep a few so I could get some little bits of video, which for me it's nice seeing the moths in the trap, uh, sat on egg boxes, but really to, and the colours and patterns are amazing, they've always fascinated me, uh, but really to see the true beauty of them, you've really got to put them in some kind of natural habitat and they really start the patterns really start to make sense there so there's the buff arches and you see this is the coronet which look black and white in the trap but actually it has patches of green on it which mimic green uh, algae on bark uh, the pale prominence looks like a bit of bark chip old bit of rotten wood uh, the pebble prominent it moves around hugs the twig and so it can move around during the daytime and it's camouflage if the sun gets on it it will move because it doesn't like to get too hot so it will go around the back of the twig. Uh, even bright looking moths like this rosy footman are really actually quite camouflaged when they're sat on a leaf sitting very still like that. Uh, they look very gaudy and bright but in amongst all the vegetation they can disappear and my favourite for the night was that uh, purple thorn moth. It just looks like a leaf and you stick it in amongst some dead leaves and you see how that camouflage, even little nicks in the leaf there, I uh, really do, and it even sort of moves slightly like a leaf as well. That's fantastic. Thank you, John. That That's was an amazing, amazing film. So your favourite one was the purple moth. Purple, purple moth, yeah, they're purple beautiful moths. Moth, so. Yeah, yeah, and, and in terms of their life cycles, uh, um, as a caterpillar, where, where are they? Well, they're on trees and shrubs, um, and they, they again, they, they're named after the caterpillar, so the caterpillar, has a it sticks its head up and its little true legs actually look like a thorn sticking out the front of it oh. so uh, they just sit motionless during the daytime looking like oh. a thorn so that's where that family get their name oh right okay so that's a bit like the um hawk moths we saw earlier with the caterpillar with the yeah they got a spike at the end this one i'll i'll maybe next time have a yeah. a little a picture of one but they just look exactly like a twig uh, yeah. So much so that you just, and they even have a little silk strand which they attach themselves to the twig during the daytime so yeah. they can keep completely motionless and then they feed at night mainly uh, when the birds obviously asleep. Yeah, great. That's lovely. Thank, thanks very much, John. And um, what, a, what a haul of fantastic. Oh, yeah, it was a very good night. Yeah, it was very yeah. pleased to have all those moths. And I got a, lucky to have a very good site too on the edge of Dartmoor to run yeah. the trap. Yeah, it looked like a beautiful garden, lots of variety. Oh, yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, we are now going to go over to the poet, Matt, to see what he has to say about this, um, this 
this moth trapping and moths and moths to a flame and what we've all put together. So um, thank you, John. And let's go over to Matt and see how he's... Hello, doing. hello. Um, wow, I, that's, that's really been wonderful. Um, seeing seeing all those wonderful moths and hearing about them, I have I have been um, gathering your lines from the chat, and some have come uh, privately, and some have come in the main chat, and I haven't really had a chance to put them all into any kind of um, <laughs> meaningful order. But they don't need to be because they're all kind of unique takes uh, on the whole thing. Um, let me read you just a compilation of the lines that we've that we've collected. I feel like I've set out a kind of word trap, and I've put out the ultraviolet um, call, and you've you've sort of fluttered these lines. Sorry, this is a terrible metaphor. I'm going to stop it. No, no, uh, no. We don't mind. Now, <laughs> <laughs> listen, uh, these are your lines, and I've taken people's notes off because it, I can't um, ascribe to everyone. Fragile moth in fleeting flight capturing nature with sunlight impossible things in their gossamer wings hello dear moth i'm sorry i didn't know just how wonderful you are your playful nature your life-giving energy now i see the beauty you hold inside and out thank you for being so splendid interconnectivity of life windows into the night connecting to the nocturnal world i don't know much about light but I know what I like. Ultraviolet. Moths drawn to light, the night time drawn around the moth. Don't look much, often underestimated. Hook tipped carpets, micros. A tiger on my hand, frisky with humidity. A light bulb moment, singed wings. Flame shoulder, flame shoulders and small angle shades. I lean and whisper in your Ear, antenna, thorax, something near. Hey, big moth, you are welcome here. Wow. Isn't that lovely? That yeah. was compilate, that was a poem made of, of, of the of the lines that you all contributed. And thank you. That that um thank you particularly to, to, to Claire for that last line was the first one that I received. And um it's just lovely. Well, all of them are lovely. Thank you so much. It, it, it really heartens me when, you know, when, when we can collectively be that creative and make a wonderful uh, kind of evocative uh, poem like that, that is, is about the moth and it's also about the magic and the uh, possible, um, the, the, the sort of energy and beauty of it all. Um, mm -hmm. Name, I, I'm not sure how much I should be saying at this point um, about well, the, the poetry competition. That, well, that shall, we, shall we move on to that? We will capture that that you have just spoken to us won't we the poem and we'll, yes well, we'll put I, on I, our website and inspire people to absolutely uh, that is now that's that's actually in a word document that i've been busy transferring onto a word document i've that. been multitasking like very few <laughs> very few of my species is able to do so there you go <laughs> well um yeah we'll we'll put that we'll put that on our website and we'll put it by the poetry competition and encourage people to enter but Matt um, do you want to say more about the competition? No I, I don't really I just want because it competition kind of is almost like a misnomer because it's a it is a kind of collaboration but people are putting you know inviting poems which we will then share with people we'll have that a slam it feels like it's it is a kind of competition that we'll probably give a prize but it's also a showcase for everyone to get to read their poem really yeah. so it's just a gathering of poems and poets. Yeah. That's yeah. an invitation to join in with that, really. Yeah. yeah. No. That. Well. That. That's great. And I know. I know that it. Um. Um. The, these shows have inspired people to write a little bit. So if anybody wants to enter, send it in. Send it in to hello at artandenergy.org, and it will come to us and we'll gather them and we'll have a few people looking at them and um because the slam we might get hundreds so the slam will include 10 or 20 of these poems won't it matt yeah that's right and, that's right. Um, and then we'll be 
Oh, what, what's this? Jenny's showing so us. I just thought I'd show you that this is our Art and Energy website and on the home page over here on the left, you've got the Moths to a Flame. There's lots of information about Art and Energy as well. Um, but down here, I need to add on here to, uh, because now we've launched the, the poetry competition, to there'll be a, a little blue thingy along here um, in the next day or so for um, contribute to your, your poem, your poetic words. Um, so at the moment we've got ways to get involved in Moths to a Flame, booking your place, which you guys have all done. And we've now got the, the next one is, is now live and ready to book. Um, colouring in your um, augmented reality moth and bringing it to life. Recording your message of hope for COP26, which is this blue bar up the side here, but there's a bit of instructions if you follow through that link. Signing up for our newsletter to hear what else is coming up. But the poetry competition, if you go to projects at the top, moths to a flame, and then down here and click on poetry competition, and it is going to load, my laptop's struggling. Um, then there's, there's lovely Matt. Um, and we've got all the, the kind of the rules and regulations and, and how to get involved. That's all on our website. Great. Yeah. So, and the and the slam the event is going to be in November. I think November the twelfth rings a bell, but we'll yeah. we'll be promoting that. We, yeah. You can actually book your tickets now, ready to join us. So that will be that's another gonna online be, that's event. Really going to be great fun. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much, Matt. That was um, um, absolutely, and thanks to all our participants, because yeah. that was a most fantastic collection of lovely, inspired words. So good, and and if it wasn't for the moths and the and the light, they'd have never all those words and it would have never turned up. They'd be attracted to this like the moths, as Matt said. So thank you. And, and over to our um, participants, um, no, not our participants, sorry, over, over to our presenters, Simon and Matt, have, have you got any other moths to show us or has, has any, any of them got anything else to show we, us? We could show people a live drinker because uh, somebody was asking, have we got a drinker and then Beautifully timed, John in his video showed a picture of a drinker, but we have got a live one. Yeah, let's have a look at that. And then all the drinkers. So I'll tell you what, I'll pan round to get an action shot of Simon extracting the drinker. Um I don't know how many pints it had, but uh, I'm I'm here all day, don't worry. Um <laughs> Be quite active, <laughs> is it? It's probably is it, a bit... going, to, is it going to fly away? <laughs> yeah, okay, Simon, if you pull your hands back a bit. Oh, yeah, beautiful, aren't they? Can you see? So it's, it's, it's basically warming its wings up now, ready for flight, vibrating them, warming those muscles. Can you see the absolutely amazing antennae on, on this? The male moths have mostly got these huge uh, feathered antennae to gather up the pheromones that the females give off, these chemical signals. John referred to um, some of the hawk moths being able to fly, you know, eight kilometers um, to, uh, to, towards a female. And of course, they, they also use those antennae. They're basically, antennae is the, the moth version of a nose. And, um, what we what we sometimes overlook is that food plants the actual food plants that these moths want and the nectar sources have a really distinctive smell as well and they'll use those antennae to smell out their food plant and smell out nectar and even smell out water of course because you know insects can smell water so how quite how they do that i couldn't tell you maybe maybe someone knows how they do that but it's it's quite amazing that they can actually smell these real subtle subtle things in a very busy complex uh world yeah lovely thanks thanks very much and thanks for setting your moth traps this evening um uh, last evening and this morning and thank you also to amy and barry as well as john thank you wonderful <laughs> thank you thank That's you very right. much now um thank you john <laughs> we we're going to finish with our quiver vision augmented moths 
Jenny, did, did we manage to receive any or have any to show you? We, we had a couple last night. So we had this lovely photograph from Jane with a lovely spotty moth here. Oh yeah, wow. And then we also had, oh, we're hoping this is gonna work. Um, from Miranda and her son. We had another spotty moth. So we had uh, a couple of spotty moths being interacted with here, which is lovely to see. Let's see if I can get that to do it again. So when you when you first bring your moth to life, it's it's much larger on the screen, and then when you tap on it on your screen, it will then shrink down and fly around, and it kind of gradually increases as it comes away from the paper. Um, we also had some photos from Gareth, who um, has been inspired to set up his own moth trap, a, a cardboard moth trap with a light, and these were some of the moths that he found last night. Um, I absolutely love these very very hairy antennae here. Yeah, that's that's, one, that's another drinker, isn't it? So it was a it was a night for drinkers. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've, we've found that a fair number of people watching this, like Dave from Laser Cuts has been designing a flat pack uh, moth trap as a result of this and having a go at seeing what there is out there. And a couple of friends of mine have dusted theirs down from the garage and um, somebody else has bought one and somebody else's husband, Gabby, has husband has, has helped her make one. So, um, we're definitely inspiring people to find out more about moths and if they if they make a record of of what they're getting and find the Devon moth group or whatever yes, the I, local moth group can yeah. i yeah could, could i sorry to interrupt you Naomi, yeah. but um as you were just saying then yeah, I was just as a county moss record, I would like to say that, um, yeah, it's all very well catching these things, but I mean, it's really important that we get scientific data out of it rather than just um, sort of saying, oh, that's a lovely moth. Um, so please, please submit your records, but only of those that you're absolutely certain about that you've got the identification right. And if you look at the Devon Moth Group website, there's a very clever lookup table you can download there, with, which has got guidelines on it. And uh, that's the way to submit them, and then they come to me, please. It's all on the um, it's all on the Deaf Moth Group website, which you could join at or and or Butterfly Conservation as well, of course, for lots of news yeah. information. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Butterfly Conservation themselves are running a butterfly count at the moment. Fifteen minutes of counting in whatever outdoor space in a sunny moment over the next few days, and that does include some moths too but yeah so join join the devon moth group if you're really interested and also if you do want to start recording and you know you found a particular drinker then then um or the magpie moth or whatever then even if it's just one record it's all helping to know what's in out there and helping us work out how to manage the landscape best to support our insects and wildlife and of course then ourselves because it's all as we keep saying it's all interconnected the energy the human the moth so next week then no sorry next month we are um it's going to be august and we are launching a wonderful book called the moth's whisper which is a children's book illustrated and written by Miranda Barlow, who's one of our collective. And this book is about a, a moth called Marnie that um, comes out of her chrysalis and then seeks the sun and gets, gets involved in adventures relating to humans and what we're doing. And it also has a call to action for children within it. So we're going to be launching that book we're going to be seeing uh, another harvest of beautiful moths um, maybe slightly different than today because it's august not july we'll we'll find out we're we're learning constantly and uh we're 
also, I think, going to look a little bit more about the art of moths because um, Amy was inspired to love moths because of the art that exists that John does painting and sketching. We, we all do a little bit of art relating to moths. So there's, there's some more information to come about that. And we hope to see you then, which is the 21st and 22nd of August. So I hope you have a good month and we'll see you then. Thank you. And we'll wave goodbye and okay. keep your words coming in and your poems there and your eye on the twinkle of life. Thank you. If I could just explain for, for next month's event, the tickets are now available, um, but until the 7th of August, they're by donation only, and then the free tickets will be available after that. Um, we're very grateful to our, our funders, Plymouth Energy Community and Arts Council England with the lottery funding. Um, that's taking us a, a huge distance and making all this possible. Um, however, the more donations we can, can get, the, the more people we can reach, um, and the more spectacular that exhibition can be when we get up to Glasgow. Um, so all donations are very welcome. Um, but as I say, those free tickets will be available from the seventh, uh, midday on the 7th of August for the next, next Watch Moths on the 21st and 22nd of August. And we hope to see you then. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Wishing you all a good, good weekend. And I'm going to sign off now. Bye. bye, -bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.